everyone. This is Dr. Lori Lo Soli coming to you today with the second of the weekly skills and dispositions counseling challenges and suggestions. The challenges and suggestions in this series are related to your developing counseling skills. And last week we started out with listening completely, which I hope was a learning adventure for you. This week we are delving a little bit um, more deeply into some skills and I'm excited to share those with you. Uh, if you are, if, this, if you're listening to this and this is attached to a class, you will want to make sure that you are doing your journaling on it. If you are just listening, please feel free to journal because that is always a great way to reflect on your practice and actively engage. Remember that as I'm giving out these challenges that the idea is that you actively attempt to the best of your ability that as, as being as ready, willing, and able as you are to actually do the challenge. So aside from just listening to it or reading about it in the course or in the, on the internet as you are, the idea is to actually try to enact this to the best of your ability. Last week, you were challenged to truly actively listen in your conversations. This week, we are taking your listening to a whole new level. We are taking your listening to then what, which is don't ask, don't tell, and don't assume. In other words, your challenge this week is threefold to communicate without asking questions, to communicate without telling the person with whom you are talking what to do, and to not make assumptions about what is being said in your conversations. So let's dig into this challenge and unpack it a little bit, starting with not asking questions, don't ask. There are a lot of skills to learn um, in counseling, and there are a lot of communication skills that we as people can always employ. So I ask you this, how many of you need to learn how to ask questions? It isn't a skill that you probably need to practice. So here it is, folks. Don't ask them, especially within the scope of the courses if you are involved in them at the moment. Truly asking questions is one of the most overused and least helpful counseling skills that exists, okay? It is a skill that you already know how to do. So as we're going through our time together, it's really going to be helpful for you to practice other skills, skills that are not necessarily as immediate to you, all right? So you may ask, well, how am I going to communicate if I can't ask questions? Well, let me give you some examples, all right? Okay, so think though, like how many of you need to say, you know, do you need to, do you, can you, are you? These are things that you do all of the time. So going back to what do you do instead, well, there are things like reflections and there are encouragers. So things like, wow, that's really interesting, tell me more. Or that sounds fascinating. Or, hmm, sounds like that really hurt your feelings. Or, wow, you are ticked at her. Or you could use something like a minimal encourager. Your body language, nodding, looking quizzical, simply repeating the last word that someone says. If someone ends with, I don't know the, I don't know what to do, you might just say, do, um, and use your, use your body language. Things like sounds challenging or saying ouch or woohoo. All of those things are alternatives to asking questions. Notice what happens to the depth of the conversation when you stop asking questions. So, and here's a little visual that I prepared for you. Once again, I'm definitely not an artist here, but I'm, I'm hoping that this will give you a little bit of an idea of what taking questions off the table for a little bit and going into more reflecting, getting a little bit deeper can actually do for you, okay? Asking questions, particularly asking closed questions, 
tend to um, keep you along the horizon when you're speaking with someone. So I'm hopeful that you can see this. So if you, if you can see here, we've got like this up here and then we have this down here. Well, questions, they take you along here. They just kind of keep you along the horizon line, okay? So you ask a question and somebody responds and then you ask another question and they respond. It's all very, it's all very linear. It's very, very horizontal. Okay, so when you stop and pick a spot and begin to drill down to a little bit deeper level using things like reflections, encouragers, repeating their last word, finding a theme, uh, getting uh, repeating a word that has um, a, like is a specifically loaded word, then you can drill down to a little bit deeper level, getting below what is necessarily evident like this so we start to drill down we go we give a reflection of feeling and we get down a little bit deeper we didn't go sideways this time we went down then we give another one and we get down a little bit deeper it's kind of like mining you're getting into like the gold or the diamonds the oil like the richness that lies below the surface and again i'm going to kind of go back to this analogy that i made before that most of counseling happens below the neck, right? So it happens below our heads. When we keep people in questions, we are keeping them in their heads thinking about things. Most of the truly challenging things that bring people into counseling happen below the neck. They happen because there's distress happening and that distress isn't necessarily just in one's head. Now, I'm not saying that thoughts and feelings are not connected. They are intimately and always connected. And if we just keep people in their heads, we don't necessarily get to the juicy stuff. So that leads me to no questions this week. Whoop, not even upside down questions in case you happen to be reading this in Spanish. All right, so the second part of this week's challenge began last week when you noticed yourself interrupting, when you were starting to pick up some of those not so functional communication patterns that you had. So last week, hopefully, you stopped giving advice and stopped telling people what to do. So that is, um, that's actually your challenge for this week is uh, to stop giving them advice and stop telling them what to do. Now, I can hear some of you out there, particularly those of you who are moms and dads saying, well, how am I gonna get my kids to do what they need to do if I don't tell them what to do? Or how, if somebody comes to me for um, advice, how can I not give it to them? Well, let's just try a couple things on for size. All right, let's start with homework. And please know I'm not telling anybody how to parent, not at all. This is not, this is not a parenting video. It, this is just, it's just an example. And certainly everybody gets to do this again to the extent that you're ready, willing, and able to do it. But let's just go on the topic of homework, okay? Because this is kind of a good example. Um, okay, so let's just say it's homework time. And let's say that a prompt is needed. Um, instead of do your homework, uh, you might try out something like, you could do your homework now as a statement or making the statement, it's homework time, okay? Those aren't telling them to do homework. It's making a statement about a time of day or giving an option for something that could be done at the moment. Now, doing that actually gives ownership to the person choosing to do the homework. But if you think about this in client terms, like a client, ownership, meaning I choose to do it, equates to self-efficacy, which means this is mine, this is about me, this comes from me, I own this, okay? Which, with clients, we are always attempting to develop. I guess we are with kids too, right? But we're always trying to develop that self-efficacy in our clients. To the extent possible this week, I really want you to be mindful of keeping what you want out of your conversations with others. Really focus on helping the person that you're talking to, let, letting them be the driver of the conversation. Okay, focus on what the other person wants, what they feel, um, and what they perceive. Doing this not only helps you to keep the focus where it belongs, which remember, we're just we're working on developing counseling skills here. It also blocks the potential for the person turning you into a scapegoat if what you're telling them 
might not actually work out. So for example, um, let's just say, let's, let's just say, all right, we'll take it back to the kids. Okay. I'm a mom. I had kids come home and ask me every now and then at least, um, you know, for advice and I might tell them what to do. All right. Well, if they go out and do what I say and it, it ends miserably, they come back home to me and say, that was a terrible suggestion. How could you possibly have told me to do that? Now everybody hates me. Okay. For those of your parents that might resonate a little bit with you. But if we take that into the role of a client, what if we tell a client what to do? What if we suggest something to them that is really coming from us, what we think that they should do versus what is emanating naturally from them? And they go out and try it. They come back to our office next week and suddenly, well, you told me to do X and da 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 da. Conversely, if it went out and it did it well, there's the idea in their mind, but it really wasn't their idea. So you follow where I'm going with this. So if we let the client or the kid come up with a suggestion that, that feels like their own, that really is their own, all right, that we can help guide them to, it gives them ownership for it. It gives them self-efficacy. So whether or not it works out to their advantage or not, they are sitting squarely in the driver's seat and they are able to claim what worked and then come back and examine what did not. I hope that that makes sense. Both ultimately produce autonomy and self-responsibility, which within the field of counseling are two of our ethical responsibilities. So the last prong of the challenge for this week is not assuming, which is perhaps one of the most vital skills that you can develop as a counselor. For those of you who are attached to a class, this probably is one of the skills that one of your texts talks about. The text um, from Don Miguel Ruiz, which is um, one of the, the keystones of that particular book, which is titled The Four Agreements, is the agreement to not make assumptions. Not making assumptions gives the opportunity for everyone to be met exactly where they are without our pre-assuming and predisposing them based on our assumptions about their words, actions, behavior, spoken, unspoken, etc. It's very hard for us as humans to remove assumptions. We do it almost automatically. So as the third prong of this challenge this week, as well as not asking, not telling, I'm asking you to not assume as well. Assuming is really different than the counseling skill of reflecting. Reflecting is based on informed hunches. Um, assuming is more of an autopilot, okay? Um, so notice this week, as you're going through your week, how many assumptions you make about other people maybe even how many assumptions you make about yourself and the impact that it has on you and also the impact that your assumptions of others have on them. And when you catch yourself making an assumption, again, like I did last week, I'm not going to ask you to not judge yourself for that. This is a practice in noticing and becoming more aware, not of self-judgment, right? So when you notice that you are making an assumption, I'm just gonna ask you to mindfully release that assumption and instead ask yourself, what is a thought that I could have right now that might replace this assumption with a more productive thought or action? And I will leave you with that, everyone. I've done a lot of speaking this week. Um, I hope that you will take a nugget or two out of this, and I will be excited to hear how this challenge goes for you in week two. There you have it. Don't tell, don't ask, don't assume. Easy peasy, right? You bet. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time and attention today. It was great spending this time with you. Dr. Soli, signing off for now. See you next week with challenge number three.